to another. Where the people of the Lord are gathered, there is the sanctuary of God. This is the true teaching of the New Testament. This is what the Jews were unable to understand. They thought you had to worship in a temple. But we have discovered that where two or more are gathered together in the name of Jesus Christ, there he is among them. It's good to see you this morning. Let us get started in our worship. Good morning. Um, hopefully y'all got to grab, I had some song sheets in the back, so if you didn't go and grab those, but I think I printed about 15, so you may have to share between y'all, but all right, we're going to start with Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Thank you. 
may be seated. Whew. I'm warm. We have been running around making sure the last minute things were done. Danny, Jimmy, thank you all for all y'all do for your work. I don't see Jimmy yet. See Gina. You. There's Gina. Gina. Oh, Gina's still, still, still Jimmy's still running. <laughs> it's been an adjustment, but everybody has pitched in and uh, very appreciative. We thank Ken Mendez for the work he's done and getting this uh, sound equipment set up for us. And uh, I would like to introduce you to Miss Emma Fox. Emma. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Tell us a little about yourself. Yeah, um, so I'm Emma. I'm originally from San Antonio. I came up to Dallas to go to DBU. I feel like I'm a Dallas Baptist. Um, but I went there to study worship leadership and songwriting. So over the last few years, I've been kind of doing a little bit of both of that, just worship leading, songwriting. Um, I'm working with Crew right now with a ministry called Transform, and their heart is to reach artists with the gospel. So I'm in a band with my husband, and so... Yesterday I was in the studio all day, and today I get to be with y'all this morning. So that's kind of what my life looks like. Yeah. Thank you. I know she'd love to talk to you about the ministry they do, and uh, there may be somebody that she could. I know they they y'all help with uh, those who are interested in getting into uh, music ministries uh, and to learn more about it. So she does that. Uh, she's a great teacher. Her uh, father-in-law is one of my best friends, and you put the two of us in the same room. And number one, neither of us have an inside voice, so you can hear us talk. Our friend John Allen had to remind us at conference that we didn't have an inside voice, and we needed to be a little quieter, so we started acting up even more. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, a good family, and her father-in-law is the pastor of First Methodist Church in Irving, Texas. And there's something common this church has with Irving, Texas, First Mark Irving. You know what it is? You were a minister there. Who else? And so was Jeff, I think, wasn't he? Jeff, I, short time maybe. One other person. Arbel. Arbel was there. <laughs> I followed Arbel there, actually. So, anyway, so there's a lot of connection there. If you have your bulletins, you will notice the announcements. Our offerings for the June have been very good so far. We had an excellent second Sunday, which is... Uh, not often the case, but a very excellent Sunday. Uh, Blood Drive, July the 9th. Chancel Bells, I believe they are practicing uh, today. They are not. They're not? No. So, no not. Oh, she is out of town. Uh, that's right. But they're, uh, they are going to perform for the July 4th next, next Sunday. That's what, I was, that's what I was thinking about. Uh, Sunday School will be here today. Uh, some of the classes meet here, some meet in the other building. Youth, any information on youth? No youth tonight because it's Father's Day. All right. <laughs> Gina? Oh, go ahead. Um, today is the deadline for signing up for the mission project we're doing next Saturday. Um, and then next Sunday is the deadline for our July mission trip. So talk to me if you need details. BBS? You're going to talk about how'd you know I was going to ask? <laughs> she has a, I start calling her radar. Remember radar? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's good to see you all. And uh, again, we're glad to have Emma with us. And more than all that, it's good to be in the house of the Lord with you all today. Let us worship.
so we start this morning off by saying we need you in every moment of every day and that our best moment is when we're with you and the sweetest moment is just that we get to talk with you and that you hear us that you promise that your love never ends that you promise that you will never leave us or forsake us and that wherever you call us to go you're going to be there with us and that you call us to trust you and you say that in you there is no fear and so i pray that this morning we get to grow in trust and just get to learn more about who you are as we come here this morning
God, on this Father's Day, we bless your holy name. Thank you for all you do in our lives. Thank you for our fathers. But most of all, God, thank you that you are our Father. You've adopted us as your children through your Lord, your only Son, Jesus Christ. And you've set us at a high place at your table where there's abundance of food, abundance of grace, and abundance of love. And may our gifts go to further your ministry in this world and the world to come. In Jesus' name, amen. space with sound while I'm talking. Sometimes I know there's a time to listen. Thank you. It's 
Spirit just moves. Sometimes the we leads us. Because we I think we're all alike sometimes. Get in love with our own voice. Thank you. Thank you, God, for today. Thank you for fathers who love their children, who guard and guide their children. Thank you for those who've struggled with fathers that may not have loved them or communicated that love. We pray for reconciliation among families. We know with all the trouble in the world that that is the only thing that is going to bring you <coughs> salvation and bring wholeness in our world. Pour out your spirit. Pour out miracles upon your people. Draw us to your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You were the first one. Oh, oh my. Good job. Yeah, that's so nice. So, we have a little something for the men in our lives. It's a um, bookmark and a little sweet treat. And on here, so y'all know, y'all listen, it says Man of God, strength, courage, faith, honesty, leadership. It says, Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 6 10. And then we're going to talk about that in a minute. So, I'm going to take these. And hand these to all the, um, take one of these to all the men in our congregation and tell them Happy Father's Day. All right, make sure everybody gets one. There we go. Oh, make sure everybody gets one. If you have, if you have some extra, come bring them back. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I think we might have it. Did everybody get one? Nope. Here we go, Mother. Thank Everybody have one, and then I want all my friends to come back up here. Man, don't eat chocolate in church. <laughs> Not in church. I will. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, y'all, look back out there and tell them what we did this week. What was this like, this past week? BBS. BBS. Oh my goodness. So tell them. Does can y'all all say our banner verse, our scripture verse for the week? Can y'all do it? All right, ready. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Ephesians 6, 10. And that's all your bookmarks. So I thought that Danny found those bookmarks for um, the kids to hand out to all the um, dads and the men in our life. And I'm like, look at that. Look how God connects all of us. She didn't even, like, wasn't conscious that that was the same scripture. For us, and we started looking. I'm like, look at that. That's our banner verse for BBS, and it connects all of us, even on Father's Day. So that that was a cool God moment. So now, tell them. Um, let's see. What did we talk about this week? We found armor of God, right? Can anybody tell me any of the pieces? Like one piece. Avery was one piece. Uh, the yep, the breastplate of justice. Do you remember the story that went with it? It's a really big guy in it. Oh, uh, Goliath. 
Goliath and uh, David. David, right? Goliath and David, so that God protects us, right? Like the breastplate protects us. Okay, what's one added? Um, the helmet of salvation. Helmet of salvation. Do you remember the story that went with it? An earthquake. <coughs> oh, there was an earthquake, right? Who was in jail? Do you remember? Anybody? Paul, Silas, right? Paul and Silas, okay? And the earthquake, the doors flew open to the jail, but they didn't leave, right? They stayed right there, okay? So, um, and we have, so we have salvation through Jesus. God's always with us as he was with them, and then salvation through Jesus. Is another piece? Lillian, what's another piece? Okay. Um, the belt of truth. The belt of truth. Do you remember the story that went with that? That was from Monday. Um, That's a long time ago. Yes. What are the three guys' names that went in the fire? That were thrown in the fiery furnace? Misha, Misha and Abednego. Yeah, that's what it sounds like when I say it too. <laughs> Misha and Abednego. Those are the names, right? You listen to the songs this morning. Yeah. So those are some different names, right? So God's always with us then, right? He protected them because they stood up for the truth, right? And what's what's in the Bible? The truth. Everything in the Bible is true, right? We have another one? What's the another? shield of faith. Okay, the shield of faith. Do you remember the Bible story that one did? Yeah. What's that? It was when Jesus walked on water. <gasps> That's right. Who else walked on water? Peter. 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 And what happened to Peter? He, he sunk. sunk. He sunk. Why did he sink? Because, because he, he looked down. down. He looked down. He looked down. Right, he looked down. He, took, he started looking at the waves and the wind and everything. He took his focus off Jesus, right? So we've got to stay focused on Jesus. Is that all of them? We have another one. Jake. The shoes of peace, the last one. Do you remember the story for that? Anybody? What is it? Okay. When Jesus was born in the manger in Bethlehem. That's right. When Jesus was born in the manger in Bethlehem, right? And so Jesus allows us to stand in peace, the shoes of peace. All right, I think I did. Did I have fun this week? Yeah. Yeah. Did you do anything fun? Yeah. What was your most favorite, 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 favorite thing? Crafting uh, the story. Craft and Bible story. All right, those are good. She had to say good job. What is it? Craft and science. Craft and science. I thought our missions. Oh, that's right. Thanks, Miss D. Yeah. All right, that's the biggest part. Our, we had one really big mission this whole. Y'all face them. Don't look at me. We had one really big mission this week, and um, we decided all of our money would go to who? Do you remember? Mills, Mills on Wheels. Mills on Wheels of Kaufman County, Senior Connect. So we collected money all week from that, and then we did different activities for things for, um, made different things for them to take to the people who get meals. We made coasters so they can have that one. We made napkin rings. They made placemats. Something else. Cards, right? They get cards, like sunshine cards, all the bright yellow cards. So something for them, and then we collected them money. And we collected, because I got eight more dollars at the end of the day, we got $500. All right, so everybody had a good time, right? Yeah, yeah just a second. Okay, hold on. All right, so let's say happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. All right, All right. All right. so everybody go sit back down, except for if you're going to be to Children's Church, come this way. Yes, thank you. I think this is where I'm supposed to be. I've already made use of my father's day. Gift. <laughs> today's scripture reading. Please stand for today's scripture reading. It's from the book of Mark, chapter uh, 4, verses 35 through 41 and uh, in today's scripture reading we're reading about Jesus crossing the uh, the Sea of Galilee this is the there are two stories about that uh, Miss Tina mentioned one where Jesus walked on water but this one is uh, an earlier one where he's just going to come instead of walking on water he's going to calm the storms uh, earlier in the uh, just prior to this this is early in Jesus' ministry. Uh, Jesus had called together his 12 apostles, and they didn't quite know who he was. Uh, but they're about to find out who he is and what kind of power he has over nature. The Sea of Galilee um, is not really a sea. It's sometimes a fresh lake. 
and sometimes called Lake Gennesaret, and it uh, the Jordan River uh, drains into it and then drains out of it and goes to the Dead Sea, which is a salt sea, but the Sea of Galilee is a freshwater lake, is about the size of Lake Tuakini, but twice as deep, but it's 700 feet below sea level, and there's a mountain on the other side, so out of nowhere, winds can come down out of the mountain into the valley and cause these very dangerous waves, and that's where we find Jesus today. And he had been sleep he had been preaching all day and wanted to cross over to the other side, and so he was, uh, of course, tired, and that's where we find him today. Let us read. On that day, when the evening had come, he said to them, "Let's go across to the other side." And leaving the crown, they took with him, took him, and with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats with, with were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boats. The boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. Y'all need to get Jeff to teach you how to say Gennesaret. Is that how you said that? So. Did I get it right? Sometimes they'll stump me, I'm telling you. Do you remember what else happened at that place? Gennesaret? There was a demon there, wasn't there? That got into a man. In fact, it was a bunch of them. Was that right? Yeah. yeah. Today's Father's Day. And I must say, I had one of the best dads anyone could have. He taught me how to box and to wrestle. Uh, not that I was e any good at them. I learned how to do a good headlock and I could subdue my friends even though I weighed about 20 pounds less than all the rest of them did. My dad started out as a farmer, went to Texas Tech. He studied ag economics. He was a great hog judge. Went to World War II, worked on airplanes in the desert in San Diego. He joined the Navy because he wanted to go see the ocean. He wanted to see the sea. He grew up in a land that looked like a sea of dirt. Tahoka, south of Lubbock, Lubbock, Texas, looks like a giant sea of dirt. It's dirt from eye to eye, from sunset to sunset. It's dirt. And that dirt blows. It becomes sand. And as a little kid living out there, I had a little pair of goggles with a little covers around here to keep the sand out of your eyes. Imagine having your own little pair of sand goggles. Uh, interesting place to grow up. We spent a lot of time in the cellar. I had a grandfather that was a great dad, influenced me, religious, spiritual man. Went to church twice a Sunday. In the morning we went to church, in the evening, afternoon went to church. Drove eight miles to church. Old pickup. My dad was a good dad. He was there for me nearly every part of my life. He was a very caring guy. But uh, when he divorced my mother, we had a falling out. I didn't talk to him for a long time. He saw my son, his grandson, as a child. <laughs> He never saw his granddaughter. Probably because of me. Because I was angry with him. I was. He got very sick. Oh, my dad was a strong man too. This applies to this part of it. He was always very strong. He could take an apple like this and just crush his hand through it. He'd milk cows. He looked like a one of the Arab wrestlers named Skandar Akbar. 
<laughs> but he got sick. Had a problem, he smoked way too much. A lot of World War II guys did. And between emphysema and other things and heart problems, he went down to Houston to the medical center down there. I went down there, hadn't, had, hadn't talked to him. And uh, I slept on the floor in the lobby because he was very sick. Finally, I just couldn't sleep in the lobby anymore. I rented a hotel room. I was wearing out. But if I'd had to do it, I would have kept sleeping on the floor in the lobby. He awoke enough that I could talk to him, and we talked, and we reconciled. And I forgave him. And I think sometimes we have problems with people in our families. It may be a mother, it may be a father. Maybe a brother or sister. And sometimes we carry those turgid, tumultuous relationships, strained relationships, we carry them with us through our lives. And I'm telling you, it affects us if we do. The greatest way to psychological and physical healing is to heal that past relationship with our family. It is. Systems theory, when you go to, if you go to a counselor and they tell you they're a systems counselor, what they're going to do, they're going to get the adults in the room to talk. And usually what happens, mom and dad, little Susie and little Johnny come in and little Johnny's broken and they want little Johnny fixed. Something's wrong with little Johnny, fix little Johnny. The counselor talks to Susie, mom and dad, talks maybe two minutes to little Johnny, and then they'll talk to little Johnny again, talks to everybody else. And many starts building that relationship back between the mother and the father, which is often broken. And then when mother and father start talking, little Johnny is miraculously healed. But the counselor never talked to little Johnny. So sometimes we need to go back and heal those relationships. We have a perfect father. We have a God in heaven. And yes, he is a father. He's the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are his adopted children. And he loves us as if we were his own children. And sometimes we go through life with a strange relationship with God, our father. And I will promise you this, our lives will never be healthy until that relationship is reconciled. We will never have a healthy life until we reconcile that relationship. In answer to the question, what is a Christian? My theology teacher, J.I. Packer, said it's one who has God as their father. He can say a lot in a few words. The Lord's Prayer teaches us to call upon God who is Father, our Father who art in heaven. In the priestly prayer in John chapter 17, Jesus prays to his Father in heaven six times. Six times he addresses God as Father. In John 1.12, we are told that all who receive him and believe in his name are given the power to become the children of God. In Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 5, Paul states that God sent his son so that we might become the adopted children of God. Adoption's interesting. Sometimes adopted children are not treated the same as the other children in the family. But I knew a man who I did a funeral for, and his kids said, well, now, this is the, uh, Susan over here. This She's his. But the rest of us, we were adopted. The two of us, we, there were three of us. There was three, three and then one. One was his, and the other three were adopted. So he treated us just like we were his. God treats us as his own. Jesus, his only son, our Lord, 
is our brother through adoption. We become the adopted children of God through belief in Jesus Christ. In 14 of John chapter 14, chapter 15, we see that. In 16, disciples are told to call God the Father through the name of Jesus, to speak through the name of Jesus. That is, we become children through the relationship we have with Jesus Christ. So to understand the riches and the benefits of the Christian life, we have to understand that God is a loving, caring Father. He is a perfect Father. And no matter what your relationship with your father, your mother, anybody in your family is, you have a perfect relationship with God if you will accept it. If we will accept it. And I will say this, as long as my relationship with my father was strained, my relationship with God was a bit strained. Yes, I was a preacher. And had a close relationship with God. But I needed to take care of my relationship with my own father. And we need to take care of our relationship with our father in heaven. And as we become adopted children, and in our relationship with God, we realize that first, as adopted children, again, I'll repeat that we are loved no less than if we were his own. Matthew chapter 3. Romans tells us that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. We're sealed by the Holy Spirit. God places the Holy Spirit on us and we're sealed in that relationship. And no one can break that relationship except for God because the only one that can break that relationship because of the sealing of Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. The only one that can break that is someone stronger than God or God himself. There's no one stronger than God and not, God's not going to break that relationship. God will not break his relationship with you. Now we may wander off, and wander off into a far country for time, a time in our lives. We may walk away from God. God is always seeking us out. God won't let us alone until that relationship is reconciled. In a, one word, he'll haunt us. He is like the hand of heaven that will search us down. He'll search all through our, through our lives until he finds us. And we establish that relationship with him. Second, we are God's heirs. We, As adopted children, we are full heirs of all the promises of God. Romans chapter uh, 8, verse 17 tells us that. Third, we have God's spirit within us. We have God's spirit as adopted children. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit. We have the spirit with which... To show the grace and love of Jesus Christ to other people with which to do those things that God calls us to do. John 1.12 says, Because we are children of God, He has sent His Spirit, the Spirit of His Son, into our hearts. We are now able to call Him by the term Abba, which in Aramaic means Daddy. That's the relationship which we have with the Father. A personal relationship with a loving God who we call dad fourth if we're his adopted children then God's interests become our interest as we seek to propagate and promote and to spread his kingdom through the world fifth we must love others equally as they become brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Finally, along with other Christians, we can now say that I am a child of God. God is my Father and heaven is my home. Every day is one day nearer to my Savior, my brother. Every Christian is my brother too. A saying worth repeating. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you know the power of his love? Do you know that you are an adopted child of God? Do you know that you are a son and a daughter of the living God? Is that relationship close? If not, have you reconciled it? 
Can you call God, Abba? Can you call him Dad? If you wish to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, to let Jesus into your heart today, I invite you to come as we sing our last song. And if you're visiting today, you decided this is the church you want to be a part of, I invite you to come. Come as we sing.
such a good father to us that you are Abba Father and that we we can depend on you. We know that you are a father who provides for us over and over, that you're so generous, that your grace abounds and your mercy is so rich. Father, we thank you that your love will never fail us and that even in times when we <coughs> we may wander that you are always chasing after us. So Father, help us to not forget your love. Help us to remember how good you are to us. And help us to trust you more as you call us to go and to be. Father, we thank you for your word this morning and for the reminder that you are Father, that you are Dad. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the grace of God, in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit, abide with and keep you today, tomorrow, and for all eternity. Amen.